So we've circled the White House about three deep in people all the way around. I've just walked all the way around to see the whole thing. It's unbelievable. Um, this hasn't been done before as far as I know. And it's a kind of demonstration of the enthusiasm that's there for Barack Obama to pick up should he do the right thing, you know? Yeah. Everyone's just like, we want you to be the guy we voted for. Climate drama, hey! Obama! We don't want no 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 climate drama, hey! in the White House? Well, we have no idea. We really have no idea. And we can't, you know, that's not for us to, like, figure out. All we can do is try to show him that he's got the support to do the right thing and that we're dead serious about it. You know, that's why we've been in his offices and that's why we'll, when people have been at every campaign stop he's made and that's why we'll be here till the bitter end. Thank you for your work. Thank you guys so yeah. much for being Thank here. Thank you for your work. Democracy looks like. Pipelines what hypocrisy looks like. This is what democracy looks like. Pipelines what hypocrisy looks like. This is what democracy looks like. Pipelines what hypocrisy looks like. This is what democracy looks like. Pipelines what hypocrisy looks like. This is what democracy looks like. Pipelines what hypocrisy looks like. This is what democracy looks like. Pipelines what hypocrisy looks like. This is what democracy looks like. Pipelines what hypocrisy looks like. This is what democracy looks like. Pipelines what hypocrisy looks like. Environmental degradation will not be solved by corporations. That's bullshit. Get off it. The enemy is profit. Environmental degradation will not be solved by corporations. That's bullshit. Get off it. The enemy is profit. Environmental degradation will not be solved by corporations. That's bullshit. Get off it. The enemy is profit. Of the sound, it was almost like a dream. You didn't really know what would come out That's of it. That's right. We had to do it because our, you know, most important scientists said, if you tap this tar sands heavily, it's game over for the climate. So you have no choice but to try, right? I mean, if you have that kind of, you got to try. But the odds were 100 to 1 against us then. And maybe they're, you know, two to one against us now. So that's an, you know, an improvement. Well, different people have different reasons for objecting to it. The people who live in Nebraska are, are worried about a spill. 
but people like me who look at global climate are worried about the implications for the future, for especially for young people. Well, we're already seeing climate changes, and it's still possible to stabilize climate over, during the rest of this century if we don't develop unconventional fossil fuels. But if we develop the tar sands and tar shale, then it's game over. That's how I described it. And I think that's a good description, because then there's no way you can get back to a stable, uh, an amount of CO2 in the atmosphere which would allow climate to be stable. And we know this very well from looking at the history of the Earth, what levels we can afford to have in the atmosphere. When I was down on Wall Street, I said, look, we, we have to occupy Wall Street because, among other things, Wall Street's been occupying the atmosphere for 25 or 30 years. We can never get anything done because big oil just puts the kibosh on it, you know? Um, the, the way that this pipeline was approved with this corrupt State Department process that essentially let TransCanada pick the company that would review it, it's like a poster child for what people are talking about at Occupy Wall Street. It's like, you know, and we're, everybody's finally just saying enough. Corporations don't get to run everything all the time. When we get to things that are as important as this, we just can't let it happen. Sorry, you know? And that's the, I mean, I think that's sort of the breaking point for a lot of folks. What, right. what is the importance of this uh, pipeline in this debate? Uh, because it's the first big move into the dirtier fuels. If using tar sands oil to refine gasoline is like burning coal in the back of your vehicle. You're producing 50% more carbon than you are with regular gasoline. So it's it's a it's the wrong thing to do, and it's that's very clear from the science uh, perspective. But yet, that science is just being ignored. So the fossil fuel industry pretends that the science is all a hoax. Well, unfortunately, you can't change the laws of science, and uh, it's clear that if we burn all of these unconventional fossil fuels, we will leave a situation which is out of the control of young people will push the system beyond tipping points. But the only reason that, that it makes any sense to get that tar sands oil is because it's subs the fossil fuels are now subsidized at a rate of $500 billion a year worldwide. But And they are not made to pay for their cost to society, the effect that they have on human health, on the environment, and on the future climate, which will affect uh, young people and future generations. So once you put a pr rising price on carbon, the dirtiest fossil fuels will be left in the ground. Right. That, the tar sands will not be mined. And the, the reason they are being is because, as I say, they're not made to pay for their cost to society, and they're partially subsidized. So what we have to do, if we're going to stabilize the climate, is put a rising price on carbon emissions collected from the fossil fuel companies. As soon as that starts, tar sands development will stop. It doesn't make sense. And all them species, they'll be wiping out. Well, they're endangered anyway. A quick death's more kind of gentle than that kind of slow decay. And when our fresh water's gone, at least they still have got oil for our cars. And with the rivers black, there won't be packs of tourists in our bars. So let them build. Let them build. Oh, let them spill. Let them spill. Why, I just think of all those colors. What a thrill. Kill, kill, kill. No more corn husking for my state. Yeah, they sold our children's fate. We're going to have oil dripping from our plate. So let them build. Oh, that Keystone XL is sure to come at the right time. With our economy depressed, they can't ignore our future crimes. And when their big pipe spills, y'all be thrilled, know the GDP still grows. Besides their oil companies, I would more than all our boats, so let them build. Let them build! Yeah, let them spill! Let them spill! Why, it will make the Ogallala better still. Kill, kill, kill! You no, know, I kinda had got the notion tar sands might cause pipe erosion, but technology's our magic potion still, so let them build. 
You know the Exxon Valdez brought a lot of jobs to Alaskan seas. And if we're lucky, we could get the same cleaning pores in prairie. Oh, we'll all get higher quick, cleaning up their oil slicks long. The work's gonna last for ages, we'll outlast our training wages. So let them build. Let them build. Oh, let them fill. Let them spill. We'll raise the price of gas and we'll still have to pay them bill. You know our rivers will all be slicker, so our boats can all go quicker. And so will their old stock ticker, let them build and send our future to hell. I'm the uh, zookeeper here, and this is Cleopatra, the queen of denial. That's uh, climate change denial. And y'all know that when ostriches are fade to face reality, they tend to bury their heads in the sand. And our, 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 message, our message to President Obama is don't be an ostrich. Don't, and face the fact that the tar sands will wreck our climate. Hey, it's the right place to be. It's the right place to be. What about the pipeline? What about petroleum? What's wrong with it? Well, you know, it's always been wrong. We act like something was all right at one time, now it got messed up. Always been wrong. The consciousness of young folks is waking up. They say, we don't need this. And they'll win. They, they, they come here with no hidden agenda. <laughs> you know, just that simple. And what a beautiful, beautiful, just to sit and watch this. And, and there won't be a pipeline. What do you have to say to people who are involved in this Occupy movement, the uprising, this whole awakening? You've been waiting a while for this. No, we even, even, even we in the Civil Rights Movement couldn't imagine this. This can never be compared to the Civil Rights Movement at all. See, white folks in America are born with 300 years of white privilege, and they will not take the shit off this country that we did. When we came to Washington, we called it a poor people's march. That don't threaten nobody. They come here and say, take back D.C., okay? They in New York saying, occupy. The only time I heard the word occupy, when a mighty nation take over a small nation. So the mentality is altogether different. More on that, more on that. And, and so they will, they will make mistakes with them. Because they don't know who they're dealing with. They think they're dealing with black folks in Mexico. This is the worst thing that ever happened. So what about violence, nonviolence? I don't even deal with that bullshit. You know, we got the mightiest army in the world, and don't nobody seem to disagree with that. Huh? But when it comes to these folks, huh? How many government provocateurs you think is in this line today? Huh? And they'll throw a brick or stick anytime they want. They don't give a damn because they're not running no publicity campaign. They're no safe form of fashion. And that's why they'll win. Compare this to the Tea Party. There's no comparison. Tea Party's scared. These folks ain't scared. Tea Party, tea party ain't racist. If they were, they were racist for their tea. They scared. And if you go back and study history, America was the same way during the Great Depression. They were scared. Okay? The difference between then and now is most white folk didn't have nothing in 36. I dare you to teach me how to ride a bicycle, then unteach me how to ride. It's impossible. So, are you still doing that the Bahamian thing? No, I sold that to a British company. What are you, what are you eating nowadays to keep so young? The main, the main thing is the number one cause of death in America is sleep deprivation. Number two is dehydration, and number three is lack of physical fitness. Then everything else falls in behind that. And I remember you used to fast for days. You still doing that? Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. You're doing a cleansing thing. And yeah. The whole uh -huh. Yeah. You look, you're, you're like uh, 60 now. Or like 80 years old. No kidding. That's amazing. Brother. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, brother. Thank you. Thank you. All right. All right. This land is my land, from California to the New York Island.